Today we're doing Jason Statham's Big Vacation. It's a uh, one-page RPG by Grant Howitt, and it should be uh, some good chaotic fun. So the prompt for this, Jason Statham, international movie star, is on his holiday, but his own impulsive nature and the attentions of his rival, the Wesley Sniper, could ruin everything. It's up to you and a skilled team of operatives, paid for by his management, to ensure that he has a great time. So you're going to pick your role. So I think uh, Josh has chosen the agent. He's going to be playing uh, Rob Robertsfield, Robertson. Uh, Robert Robertsfield, Jason Statham's uh, agent. That's all you need to know about me. Your three abilities are Statham lore, failed actor, and narcotics. I got them stinkies. When you attempt an action and the Statham master, that's me, reckons the outcome is in doubt, you'll roll a d12. If uh, the result is four or less, the action is a success, with a one being a critical success and a 12 being a critical fail. If you can incorporate one of your three abilities, the benchmark for success goes from a four to whatever number you have in that skill. So uh, for Robert, his Taysom lore is an eight, his failed actor is a six, and his narcotics is a six. So if you can find something to do that would involve, for instance, uh, you're going to be carrying Jason Statham's favorite snack, uh, Jason Statham's, that he maybe he could call that a narcotics role. You know, that's his, his fix. He's going to give him some Statham's. Got to get, gotta get them Statham's in. And the benchmark for success would then be six instead of four. The idea is that we're going to try and incorporate your skills into trying to make sure that Jason has a, a good time on his vacation so that you have a better chance at succeeding. So Wesley Sniper hounds popular action stars in a quest for deranged vengeance. He has sworn never to shoot other actors with his high caliber rifle, but everything else is fair game. He will interfere with every scene from afar. He's too distant to be stopped, and so the team must work around him. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. Are we, are we dealing with a sniper situation? He could have a sniper, but also he employs other methods to interrupt Jason's holiday. So, yeah, we're going to go through three or four days, depending on what we're looking at for time for his vacation. On any one day, we're going to land on two of the four Satham tracks that could come into danger. Either dead, Jason dies. Not good for me. Sad. He's very, very sad, which is not good for him. He gets arrested, probably not good for the lawyer, or he gets bored. So you guys are get to choose one track, and I will choose one track as the Statham Master for <laughs> each day. Anytime something happens that would make that tracker go up, we're going to roll a G3, and we're going to go up three points. And if it goes up to 10 on any one track, it's not good. So any decision that you guys make, you roll the D12. But anytime you roll a D12, you're also going to roll a D6. And if the numbers match, like I said, it's the chaos factor in this game where Jason does something totally out of pocket in that situation. The only other thing is this adrenaline versus stability factor. If you fail something, potentially, or if the moment calls for it, your adrenaline will go up. Oh, that's just like the movie that he was in, Crank. Yeah, so you start off with a stability of three. If you fail a roll badly, or if the moment in the scene calls for it, your adrenaline will get ticked up. You lose one stability and gain one adrenaline. If you have adrenaline, you are minusing that number from your D12 every time. All right, but stability starts at three and goes down. Adrenaline starts at zero, goes up. Yes, you lose stability and gain adrenaline. If you lose all of your stability, you potentially die, go mad, or are otherwise rendered unable to help Jason enjoy his holiday. So there's a couple of tables for this game that I've rolled on already to decide where we're going and what machinations uh, the Wesley Sniper has put in place to interrupt Jason Statham's holiday. So for your roles, Josh chose the agent. He's going to be playing Rob Robertson. I uh, no, no, Robert Robsfield. Robert Robsfield. Jeez. Okay. Robert Robsfield is agent. Here's my card. Okay. Uh, Justin, you're going to be playing the lawyer, right? Do you have a name for, for this lawyer? Uh, yes, my name is John Smith of Smith & Jones, Attorneys of Law. Perfect. So, John Smith, your three abilities are law, lore, so not knowledge of law, and that number is nine. So it's a high number. I for detail is a six, and spin doctor, which is equivalent to like fast talk. You're spinning the conversation, so that's a seven. Uh, I might actually be useful. All right. Uh, Chuck, what role were you thinking of? Uh, the bodyguard. Sweet. These skills are pretty fun. Do you have a name for your security guard? Yeah, uh, Alex Miller. Alex Miller, the security guard. Sweet. So, Alex, your abilities are these hands are weapons, and that's an eight. Your second ability is these weapons are also weapons. 
which is also an eight. And then you have a skill called Extraction, which is a six. All right. <laughs> so we've got Alex Miller as a security guard, John Smith, his lawyer, and geez, Rob Robertsfield. Robert Robsfield. Robsfield. Robert Robsfield. As Jason Statham's agent. He's the only client I have. <laughs> Perfect. Did you get him TiVo? I mean, that's the whole reason why I'm on his vacation. He's literally, <laughs> I have all my eggs in this basket. <laughs> you guys are at this Airbnb. Early morning, you guys are all sitting at the table eating breakfast. Uh, yeah, I've cooked up the steak -ums. Perfect. Jason Statham picks in his bedroom door into the kitchen, busts into the kitchen, and he says, Hi, get your boots. We're going to the Hindu temple. And he's dressed in like a robe. <laughs> I, uh, you're working on that next film I got you lined up for? Yeah, yeah, I want, I want to go check out the, the Hindus at the Hindu temple. That's, that's, that's what I was thinking for today. Oh, yeah, no, no, people watching. That's great. That's going to be great for this role. Uh, so what sort of transportation did you have lined up for you and Jason to, to get to the Hindu temple? Jason, baby, darling, uh, we should uh, we should just take one of your cars because you're really big in the cars. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll take something fast and fun. Can I, can I use my Statham lore? <laughs> Just the war. <laughs> Pick out a car that I know he owns. Yeah, I'll sure. Yeah, them. absolutely. I <laughs> uh, forgot. We're supposed to pick these Statham tracks for today's adventure. So out of the four, which one did you guys want to put in play? And then I'll choose one. It's dead, sad, arrested, or bored. You guys want to just roll a D4? Yeah, yeah D4 is good. D4 is good. Uh, so that's going to be a four. So bored. All right, so we got to make sure he's not bored <laughs> at a Hindu temple. <laughs> the potential for this is for him to be very bored. And I'm going to pick arrested. So he can't get arrested and he can't get bored. <laughs> well, he can't be killed. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm not going to lie to you. My uh, Hindu law is a little eh. No, I won't make you roll for that. You know what kind of vehicles that Jason has. Who's driving? Me, Alex. Yeah, uh, we should definitely take your Jaguar XJR there, Stephen. That's one of your favorites. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. It's real fast. You want shotgun or? No, no, I'm, I want to sit in the, in the passenger seat. This is, uh, this is very acceptable. All the uh, paperwork has been done, all the laws and all the licensing. <laughs> so, well, say okay. Oh, uh, that's not very exciting. Let's go for a ride, but you got to drive fast. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like packing up the steakums I was cooking. We'll, we'll need these later. <laughs> a little cooler. <laughs> so, you, so you guys pack in and, and you're heading to the, the Hindu temple. Alex Miller, his guard is driving. Jason's looking out the window. He's in his monk Hindu garb, like robe. I gotta say, Jason, when I gave you that role as like a Hindu monk, you know, I didn't think you'd take it, but you're really getting serious about this. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's right up my alley. It's gonna be all sorts of fighting and, and, and fun action stuff. Yeah, that's, a, that's what the Hindus are known for. <laughs> they really are. Have you ever read Hindu Indian history? It's violent as hell. <laughs> uh, Jason and I don't suppose I'm gonna have to file some paperwork of any religious claims or no, no, I don't think I don't think so. I, I think we'll be all right. But hey, listen, I was hoping we could go a little faster. You know, we're on the highway in this in this nice car. Can you hit the gas a little? <laughs> Jason, just so you know, uh, it's perfectly fine if uh, your bodyguard gets arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. So you guys roll up to the Hindu temple. He is ready to go. He gets out of the car and he, he starts walking over to the temple. There's like a line of people waiting to go in, all dressed in robes. Well, uh, Jason, it seems you're going to fit in just fine here. Oh, yeah, this, this is going to be great. I didn't think the uh, the Hindu temple would be this hopping. It might be a holiday. You guys stand in line, and uh, it's starting to take a while. There's a long line of people waiting to get into this temple. It, it's a holy day, and everyone's coming to visit. But everyone's in single file. There's two guys in, in garb, like, letting people in one at a time. And Jason says, man, this is, this is going to take all day. I, uh, I got a little something to pass the time, and I like shake a little pill bottle. <laughs> All right, roll, roll me uh, roll me narcotics. All right, so I just have to roll a D12? Yeah, and a D6. All right. Uh, so I rolled under my 6. I got a 5 on the D12. Rolled a 3 on the D6. Yep, so um, you, sh you shake... Wait, it's a pill bottle of, of steakums? Oh, yeah, they're, they're dehydrated bits. <laughs> you shake it, and Jason's eyes get big. Just, oh, man. I didn't know you were going to bring those today. Oh, yeah. You know, I always got them on me. I got to keep my star, you know, happy. John's going to take a look around. He's going to see if there's, like, any other way in, if anyone else is getting in, like, some other way. All right. Jason takes the pill bottle, and he, like, pours out, like, a line onto his hands. <laughs> it's just, like, dehydrated, like, jerky powder. At this point, yes. <laughs> he just snorts it, uh, Jason. <laughs> the steakums are up his nose. And his eyes get big. He says, 
Oh uh, yeah, I could, I could wait all day. This is this is fine. This is good. I, I'm gonna just like lean over to the lawyer. It's completely legal. I don't know how why he gets high off this, but <laughs> John Smith, you're gonna go look for like another way in, or see if you can try and find another entrance. Yeah, see if there's other ways getting in. Um, I'm assuming I look very official, and so I'm just going to be very assertive and just look around and see if there's any other sort of uh, way. Like I'll kind of mingle through the crowd, not making it look like I'm trying to cut or anything, but just make it look like I have a destination in mind that's not in this line and just trying to find a different way through. You can walk all the way up to the entrance. There are, are a couple like um, head Hindu folks at the door, sort of letting people in and greeting everyone um, one by one. You could try and talk to them. Namaste. And I hand them a business card. <laughs> and the gentleman, um, he puts his hands together and he gives you a head nod. He'll take the card and look at it and say, ah, you're here for the festivities, I see. Yes, yes. What, what exactly is going on here today? Ah, well, it's the uh, Hindu, <laughs> Hindu uh, <laughs> holiday. <laughs> that we've all heard of. <laughs> yes, it's... Uh, Ramanama <laughs> Shumidang it's, Dangang. It's, it's the. Or something uh, offensive like that. <laughs> it's the holiday of um, Diwali. Yes, yes. We're, we're going to light some fireworks and, and light some candles, and it's going to be a good time. Good time. And uh, how many W's in that? All of them. Interesting. Diwali. Was that not the four armed goddess? No, no. That's Kali. <laughs> I, I, actually, no, that'd be Krishna. And that's not a goddess, that's a god. Anyway. <laughs> he just says, uh, if, if you would be so kind as to uh, wait your turn in line. I have very important business here to attend to. Uh, my friends over there, and I point to them, are attending with me. You see, um, the gentleman dressed clearly in Hindu garb is a reincarnation of the goddess's son. Ah. Uh -huh. And then uh, he looks over at Jason Statham, and Jason Statham is just st standing there. Snorting Statham's. Eyes bright as the moon. He just like leans over out of line and like gives like a very childish wave. Do I ever see any like art or anything in there? Anything depicting any of like the gods or anything like that? Oh yeah, inside there's all statues and. Would I know the goddess or god? Uh yeah, yeah. So my point is like, look, the resemblance is just uncanny, wouldn't you say? It's just Jason Statham in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> you can roll me a fin doctor roll. I was at D12. A D12 and a D6. The D12 is what you need to hit as a benchmark. All right, I got a five. Okay, yep, that beats a seven. What did you roll on your D6? I rolled a one. Okay. So, yeah, you've successfully convinced these Hindu swamis to let you in. Get your friends, and we'll bring you around to the side, and, and you can come in and enjoy the festivities. Excellent, my good man. Thank you so much. And uh, please, I hand him a second card. Give that to your friend. He puts his hands together um, and does a bow. Just so you know, it's all vegan. No cows were harmed in the making of these cards. <laughs> what he means is I didn't personally harm them. <laughs> Another Hindu templeman comes with you and guides you around to a, a side corridor and allows you to enter. Jason is very excited. He's just getting distracted like in a very childlike way about everything, you know? Oh, look, look, look at that over there, what's this? And he's like, you know, investigating too closely like the statues and he's asking you to like take a he's like, hey, can you, can you take a picture with me in this goddess statue over here? And he like climbs up on top of it and wraps his arm around it. Anything for you, Sathams. So you take a picture of him? Oh yeah, and uh, I'm gonna use my Statham lore to, you know, get his good side. Okay, all right, <laughs> uh, roll me the Statham lore. Uh, so that is a three, so I made that, and the D6 was a six. Okay. Yeah, yeah, work it, baby. Come on, come on. Oh yeah, give me that look. John's just gonna take a quick look around to see if there's any signage or any, anything that we need to, like, you know, <laughs> like, don't touch the statues, you know, a thousand year curse, something like that. So Jason is up on this statue, and he's, like, doing all these poses, and you're like, work it, work it, oh yeah. He, like, pushes his butt out, and he, he looks back, and, like, here's, like, the shift puts his finger over the, his mouth. <laughs> and then, yeah, John Smith, you'll see some very clear, like, demarcation line borders, like, uh, with little rope. Do not cross this line, you know. Please don't touch the statues or monuments. So Jason's, like, climbing all over it. He's clearly having a good time. But as a lawyer, you know, it's probably not a great thing to be taking pictures of him. Jason, can I talk to you for a minute out there? Just one more time. Just one more yeah, yeah, one more, one more, one more. This is going to be a good one. Well, hold on, hold on. He'll have plenty of time for that. Just, just, just a moment of your time, Mr. Stamos. Statham. Statham. <laughs> <laughs> We're Westeros now. <laughs> Statham, I'm sorry. He, he grew up watching Full House. It's 
<laughs> it's just everywhere I look. Everywhere is a flame. <laughs> he hops down from the statue, but not the most graceful of moves. But he comes down from the statue. He, he like ducks under the rope to come back over. He's like, ah, hurry, hurry up with this. I want to see these pictures and I want to go, go, go in, into the temple there. Yeah, no. Absolutely. I just thought as a man of the times, you would want to know this. One of the latest trends actually going around there. Um, it's called hovering. H hovering? What is, what is it? It's uh, this new trend on uh, the, the, the talk, the, the, t the TikTok. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you completely respect all boundaries. <laughs> All right. And you have somebody hold you up to pretend like you're hovering around something and making fun poses. Yeah. All the kids are doing it. Very popular. All right, come on, Statham, I need you to grind up against this statue of the goddess. Come on. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, yeah, that, that sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm, um, Muscles. What's your name? Alex. I'm sure Alex would be all the happy to help. Thrilled. He says, all right, well, we'll get one more picture, and then we'll, we'll head inside the temple and see, see what's going on in there. Maybe we can find some cool things to take pictures of. Sounds like a great idea. You are just full of great ideas. Like covering. Give me a spin doctor role as you try and convince Jason that he came up with this idea of hovering and that it is, in fact, a good idea. All right, I rolled a two on the 12 and a three on the six. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. I started I started that trend. That was that was me. You know, the first pictures I saw, I could have sworn. And now I know it's it's been verified. Excellent. You know, you are such a trendsetter. You know, go up there and just you, you keep trendsetting, you trendsetter. Yeah. Action hero, Jason Statham. Yeah, that's me. Man, your lawyer's got such a way with words. So you, you guys enter the temple. It's, it's gorgeous in there. There's all these statues and stuff. You guys are perusing around. There's some people lighting some candles, some people dancing. All of a sudden, a large swarm of birds come flying into the temple. These green and blue, like very exotic birds. Wait, where are we again? Like what, what country are we located in? This temple is like in the smack dab in the middle of the city. Yeah, what city? Like, uh, like LA or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. These birds should not be here. These are foreign and exotic birds, but this big swarm. Is this, is this turning into a Call of Cthulhu campaign? <laughs> No, no, no. It's just a Bollywood flick. So there's going to be a oh, lot okay. of dancing. <laughs> you guys see it, and Jason sees all these birds, and he can start sweating. He starts getting nervous. He's trying to put his hands in his pockets, but he doesn't really have any. Um, <laughs> could, I, could I check my Statham lore to see if I understand what's going on here? Um, Yeah, sure. Roll, roll me Statham lore. Uh, so that was a 6 on the D12 and a 1 on the D6. You're not really sure entirely. Uh, Statham, buddy. Milk ticket. What's what's wrong? <laughs> he pulls you aside. He says, uh, we either got to get those birds or we got to get out of here. But I also want to enjoy the temple, so I'm conflicted. Yeah, no, no, that, that that's uh, that's two separate things that hopefully we can smash with a single stone. Yes, but not the birds. They, they got to be safe. They're, they're worth a lot of money. Okay, so you, you want the birds gone, but you don't want us to harm the birds. Yeah, right. So, okay, I'm, I'm going to start going to the birds go, shoot, come on, get out of here, bothering them. Yeah, get out of here. Robert, roll me a roll to try and get these birds out of here. I guess I'm going to, like, start acting like the birds, using my failed actor. <laughs> <laughs> you're going you're gonna to try and be the alpha bird and try and lead them cool. away. Cool, which is cool. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, imitate their, their call and their, like, body movement, but I'm also going to try and double dip into my narcotics. And okay. use some of the dried up steakums to, to like, kind of have a path behind me to get them out. Okay, so. Cuckoo, kachoo, drop some steakums. Cuckoo, kachoo, a few more steakums. You say, don't worry, don't worry, Jason. I got this. And then you start cooing and dropping steakums everywhere. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, roll me that d12 and, and the d6. Um, so, I rolled exactly a six on my d12. Okay. And I got a four on my D6. So you start like doing that and you notice the birds start flying in the same pattern as you. So at this point, they're kind of flying in circles, like vultures, like predatory birds circling their prey. And there's all these stakeums in the middle. And you're going to try and lead them out of the temple. Yeah. Is there any like uh, music playing? I want to try and like do it to the beat and do actually turn this into like a Bollywood number. <laughs> yeah, there's some music playing and some like chanting, some throat chanting. And there's some people dancing with elves and stuff like that. 
you're like dancing around, you've got your arms outspread and you're just dropping stakeums trying to leave these birds out. And a lot of them do go outside, but they're still sort of like hovering around outside and then there's still like a couple lingering around inside. Uh, but I got a good portion of them outside away from uh, Jason. Yeah. Uh, as I'm like walking out with some of the birds, I'm going to look over at Alex and Smith. Like, get rid of the rest of these birds. You see how they're making uh, Jason and upset? Do I see any like Hindu priests or anything like that? Anyone who seems like they have some sort of authority here in this temple? There's a couple folks, the head of this temple, and they have like a different colored robe on, and it's a little more ornate. And they look like they might be like leading this temple in today's festivities. Um, so I would like to walk up to him somewhat casually, um, you know, very official. I have my briefcase in one hand. I have one hand in my pocket and I'm walking up to him. He's like, I do a typical bow. He's like, namaste. He looks confused and says, uh, hi. John Smith of Smith and John's Attorneys of Law. And I hand him my card. Uh, he takes the card. He hands it to the guy on the side of him. And that guy hands it on to the guy on the side of him. And that guy hands it to the guy on the side of him. Are you, uh, are you familiar with the birds that are flying around your temple here? He says, the festival of Diwali brings many splendors. No, indeed, indeed it does, indeed. Are you aware that these um, these birds are very rare and possibly endangered? I have no knowledge of the danger that birds may be in, but I know that this festival is a festival of light, and we are celebrating illuminating the world around us and, and keeping evil at bay. So I, I can only surmise that these birds are birds of fortune and joy. Well, I hate to be the lawyer in all this, but you see, these birds are rare and endangered, and if found or possibly harmed on your property, you can face fines, heavy fines. I'm talking tens of thousands, if not, I've seen it go as high as millions of dollars for harming a single feather on these birds. I'm just here as a helpful hand to say that it would probably be in your best interest and the best interest of this temple to quietly and safely remove these birds from the premises immediately. As you're talking to this guy, you see a red dot appear on his chest. Isn't that normal for them? <laughs> it should be on the forehead, shouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, is that just how it is? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, I set myself up. It's like, oh, right down on his forehead. That's normal. <laughs> oh no. No, it's on, it's on his chest. Oh no, no, that's wrong. That's not right. <laughs> I will immediately pivot, scooping him in my right arm and leading him away. And she was like, look, look, I'm just saying, like, if you get these birds out of here, it'll be really in everyone's best interest. And I just keep walking and talking with them about how he needs to get these birds out of here. It's in their best, his best interest. No harm is to come to the birds because of the heavy fines. And I just keep going into the EPA. And did, did you know that big oil? And I just keep going on and on. And I'm just walking with him in tow. And I'm pointing to the other guys like, hey, would you, would you please remove these birds from the premises without farming them? Thank you very much. Now, as I was saying, I just keep going on and on to it. And I even like, drag it into it. like i'm very interested in the actual you know law and history of the hindu religion and, and i just keep going on and on i'm just walking with him until i like assuming the dot's gone yeah you don't see the dot anymore uh, but give me a spin doctor roll ah that's a 12. Ooh. oh that's a, okay well he got not uh, and what's your d6 uh, my d6 is a four so you pick him up and you're trying to talk to him and all of a sudden you hear a gunshot and it actually it skims you in the calf john smith of smith and john's <laughs> well, this bullet grazes your calf and then strikes a nearby statue the music oh, oh, oh this music is just Ah, oh, you know, you gets really loud there every for like that split second. Ah, oh, yeah, good stuff. And then in that moment, you see four guys, thug-looking guys. They're very built, tattoos. They're um, concealing, but not really concealing. Pistols on their hip, and they're walking in, and they're clearly looking for somebody. And Jason is trying to dance on the statue some more. <laughs> oh, actually, no. He goes to dance on the statue, and then he puts up his fingers. Oh yeah. Covering. And he looks over at Alex Miller and says, would you mind? I was like, first thing, boss. I like pick him up. So, so he's like that painting of Adam and God. <laughs> where, where they're trying to touch fingers together. <laughs> yeah. So he's looking over at Robert to take pictures of him as he's like hovering and his hands like outstretched toward this picture of like Ganesh, this elephant goddess. John Smith, you see uh, these four thugs walking in the front door and they're like looking for somebody. And it's sort of making you uneasy. Have I spent enough time outside that these birds are now just hanging out there and away from Jason Statham? Yeah, a lot of them have landed in the trees and the walkways nearby. I, I would have walked back in then. 
Okay. You see Alex holding up Jason Statham, like waiting for a picture. Oh, I, I run over there, start taking a picture. Uh, is there any like a uh, fire going on or anything like that? Some candles, things like that. People are are like um, there's like a uh, like incense and that sort of thing as well, but not like a fire pit, not like a large fire. How far away are these guys from Jason? You guys are all towards the back, and these guys have just walked in the front entrance. So you're on opposite end of the temple. But they're walking pretty swiftly and, and looking for somebody. Is it clear that they're carrying? Yes. All right. Uh, I, I turn to the guy who was, um, excuse me, um, is this, this happen to be a gun-free zone? Is this is a school zone? Uh, there's no shooting allowed? He says, this temple is a, a peaceful temple. We do not uh, encourage violence here. If you encourage it, I'm asking if by the books, on the law, is this a place where you can open carry weapons? He leans into here and says, I thought you were the lawyer. <laughs> Wouldn't this be a good time for a law lore roll? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Give me a law lore roll to know if this temple is prohibited uh, guns. I rolled an 11 and a 6. Okay, um, it is it is, uh, it is, is not a gun-free zone, you think. Um, <laughs> oh, <shit>. <laughs> yeah, so they're making their way through the crowd. They're, like, clearly on a mission. And um, one of them points over to Jason Statham, who is hovering over this goddess statue. He's pointing, and the other three are trying to look, and, and, and then they nod in agreement. And um, they're heading over towards Jason. I'm going to go over to uh, the agents. Just go over like... Hey, we got, we got we got company. I've been shot. I'm losing blood quickly. Oh, well, one second. I'm getting one more shot. <laughs> All right, Jason. Last one. Last one. Then we gotta go. Make it good. Come on. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Uh, where are these guys now? Uh, they're closing in on you. They're getting close. Uh, Alex, uh, th that's your job. Uh, Statham, come on, come on, huh, baby. Let's go. We're gonna go look at some of the pretty birds. He says, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, my birds. I mean, the birds." He said, "We sh we should catch those." put them in cages, and sell them on the black market. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. No, no, I love the way you think. Um, that sounds like a great idea for a script. Let's uh, talk outside. And he'll say, but there's so much so much more temple to enjoy. Ah, but my birds, I mean, the birds. <laughs> yeah, he'll follow you outside. These birds are yeah, have caught his attention. You know, I think they like Stakeham just as much as you. Meanwhile, Alex will intercept the goons. <laughs> okay, so you guys go outside, and he's bent over, and he's got his hands out like a pigeon in, like, New York City. He's, like, walking after him, trying to catch him, and, and the birds just, like, walk, like, at an equal pace, but, you know, he can never quite catch the bird. I'm just going to kind of, like, shake the pill bottle again. Give me a narcotics <laughs> roll. All right, this will get him over to you, uh, Jason, baby. Oh, no, it won't. I got a nine. Uh, so is that a, a point of adrenaline? Yeah, there's a lot of things happening, and you're getting kind of nervous. Oh, was I supposed to get a point of adrenaline for my fails? Your crit fail? Yeah, we'll give you a point of adrenaline because you did, in fact, get shot. So your <laughs> adrenaline is up a little bit and rising. Robert, yours is also up because uh, the narcotic trick just isn't working. It's like when you give the dog too many treats, and then he's like not really interested in the treats anymore. Yeah, I overfed them on the steakums, and now it's not working. And that's like, um, that's a I have to add a plus one to all my rolls, right? Yes. He's like now running and leaping onto the ground, trying to like catch these birds. Is he at least having fun? Yeah, he seems to be having fun, okay. but he's very concerned about the birds. <laughs> and you hear somebody at, at one of the tables, because there's tables out there. You hear somebody on the phone and says, yeah, yeah, 911. Yeah, I think there's some illegal birds. Uh, at this temple, and we should get some law enforcement over here. This man's jumping, trying to like squash them. There's, I, I don't know what's happening, but there's gunshots and endangered animals. I'm gonna walk over to them. Oh, uh, hey, yeah, no, we're actually we're just filming here. Um, this is all part of a film set at the moment. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try and use my failed acting. Okay. I'm going to go up to him. Was like. Uh, yes, this is all legal business. It's all taken care of. I signed the contracts, and I'm going to hand them my card. Okay, all right. Give me a failed actor roll. Do I get any bonuses for the lawyer helping me out? Yeah, we'll give you, like, a bonus die. Like, roll it twice. It's a three, That's which would be a four of my plus. Okay. Oh, and then a four plus one, which is a five. And the D6, the lowest, was a one. Okay. To the person on the phone? Actually, uh, cops... I guess it's a movie? I don't know. I'm a little confused. I think it's just a... You don't recognize Jason Statham? Oh, Jason Jason Statham. Oh, it's an action movie with Jason Statham, the act and the cop that Oh, what's the what's the address? I I love Jason Statham. Oh, no, no. We it's it's a closed set. <laughs> a, well, I guess it's a closed set. And it says, "All right." And then she they, they get off the phone and Jason's 
plopping around. Alex, you're trying to intercept these goons? Yep. So you're just going to walk right up to them? Look, uh, where are your tickets, guys? He says, um... It gets to the gun show. <laughs> we don't need any tickets here. We want that man right there. And they, like, try and push you aside to, like, head over to Jason. <laughs> He's just pointing over at Jason Statham, trying to catch these chickens. <laughs> catch their arms? I was like, sorry, sirs, you acquired tickets to the gun show. I'm going to, like, try to disarm them, I guess. <laughs> Give me a roll for these hands or weapons. <laughs> That's a 10 and a... A 10 and 2. So you failed at these hands or weapons, so... You go to, like, disarm him. It's like one of those things where, like, your hand goes, then someone puts their hand on top of it, and another person puts their <laughs> hand on top of it, and you're all just, like, slapping each other's hands. But then one guy kind of butts in and goes, hey, 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 look over there. And then three of the goons are going to try and rush over to Jason. Can I push a statue on top of them? You can try. Give me these hands <laughs> or weapons. I got a two. Nice. Uh, and then a D6. I got a one. You're able to kind of, like, drop kick one of these statues, and it, and it falls on top of these three guys. Well, it crushes two of them, and they're pinned, and the other guy says, what the fuck? And he just keeps running. He leaves them there, and he's, like, full speed, like, charging at Jason Statham. Do I see him? Yeah, so Jason is on the ground. He had just done a belly flop. His tummy hurts a little. He looks up and he sees this guy in a suit, just full speed sprinting. Hands are straight like a palm. Full speed at Jason, and Jason's eyes are uh, get big. He recognizes these people. I feel like me and Smith were relatively close. Yeah. Can I intercept him while taking out a syringe? So you're gonna try and like get to him before he gets to Jason? Yeah, and I'm stabbing him with what's in the syringe. Okay, give me a narcotics <laughs> roll. Jason! Everything's slow-mo. It's still a COVID vax. This will be a, a combination of failed actor and narcotics. You're like a dexterity and acrobatic skills from your acting, and then like the literal narcotics in the syringe. In my old uh, acting career, I uh, did my stunts once, and uh, yeah, it didn't go well. <laughs> That's why it's the failed career. All right, so and I do have to add a plus one because of the adrenaline, correct? Correct. Oh, no, that's an 11. I uh, I trip and skid my knee. <laughs> yeah. You have the guy the ankle. <laughs> yeah, like almost there. And right when you're about to like do the springboard and jump up, dab him with it, one foot goes in front of the other and you trip over your own ankle. You land on your knee and for a moment all you hear is and you're just holding your knee. Yep, no, that hurts. And um, he rushes and this guy jumps on top of Jason like a dog pile, like a ball style. Can I, uh, in between my, ah, can I just say to Jason Statham pulling from my Statham lore, Jason, quick, use your boxing training that you did for that movie. Ah, you remember all those, all those weeks of training? You actually got really good. Box the shit out of him. Ah. Um, boy, he's on top. Yeah, he's on Jason right now. Yeah, he says, uh, Oh, yeah, I was going to play Muhammad Ali in that movie. That wasn't the movie, <laughs> but yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> um, so can I, can I do some Statham lore? Yeah, give me Statham lore to jog his memory of his own life. Now I'm adding two to the roll because my adrenaline went up again, correct? Uh, yeah, it's going to go up again. Now, does it go up on every failed roll or just critical fails? Critical fails and where the Statham master sees appropriate. Oh, so then do, did I gain another one? Yeah, we're, we're going to give you two because you, you actually physically hurt yourself. Ah, fair enough. Uh, well, it's going to be just enough because that was a six. Nice. So that puts me right at an eight. Uh, the D6 was a four. So he's like, oh, yeah, that's Southpaw. And he comes up and, and he spins around like an alligator roll. And then he clocks this guy right in the face and he, he passes out. <laughs> oh, should have let him with that. Ah, oh, my knee. And then he says, uh, hey, guys. I think I had enough of this temple. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, lo I'm loading up your pictures on uh, Facebook. I'm going to go up to the unconscious guy and, uh, like, kind of limping a little bit, pull out a car and I leave it in his chest pocket and I tap it and then I ouch. <laughs> <laughs> if you play both sides, you always win. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to change this client list. <laughs> you guys get back in your Jaguar and you make it back to the Airbnb and Jason says, uh, hey, Thanks for helping me have a great day today. I got I got a lot of pictures, and I didn't get arrested, and I had a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anything for you, uh, Stephen, baby. He kicks in his bedroom door and says, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, discuss pricing with the hospital for these busted doors. 
Yeah. Well, why would you go to the hospital for that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think doors might be a euphemism. Like, say, I'm going to send you home and an ambulance. Ambulances don't take you home. <laughs> yeah, I uh, lost a lot of blood today. Uh, you guys are all sitting around the next morning eating Jason's take them for breakfast. So, quick question Does my stability go back to three and I'm out of adrenaline? Yeah, that all resets. Quick, um, quick question also. Josh, what is your character's name? Uh, Robert Robsfield. Hey, hey, Rob, Rob. Um, yeah. Look, I'm not not trying to be ungrateful here, but can we pack some real food for the for the rest of the <laughs> next go around? Look, Smith, I'm gonna I'm gonna level with you here. The Jason Statham Statham's didn't didn't sell well. <laughs> it was just way more way more supply than demand. I currently hold the last bit of stock of it. I'm just trying to get rid of it. <laughs> Well, if I can say anything about your Roberts, is uh, you're you're crafty. You're crafty, that's for sure. I, I've saved myself a lot of uh, money on meals. <laughs> so you guys are sitting around for breakfast. You're talking about the steakums, and uh, Jason Staven picks open his bedroom door. He's got like a sun hat and a walking stick, and says, "All right, get get your shit together. We're going to the national park." Which uh, one, J Jason? Yeah, which one? <laughs> I imagine you guys were. Well, I guess we said L.A., but I was imagining New York City. <laughs> we, 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 we blew a plane. Please, for the love of God, don't say Central Park. <laughs> We're going to Central Park. That's not a national park. <laughs> it is today. <laughs> we get to Central Park, it's just like National Park Day. It's like, oh, well, look at that. You guys uh, arrive at Central Park. I, I like the idea better that we were in LA, but we just fly to New York. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We flew to New York to go to this National Park. <laughs> yeah. Not National Park, just Central Park. So you guys uh, approach Central Park. There's like people camping in tents. Those, those aren't campers. Those are just homeless. Yeah. <laughs> there's a sign that says only you can prevent forest fires. And there's, there's a, it's a big pigeon. Like a like a sitting pigeon, he has his wing outstretched. Oh, this is great. I'm gonna make so much money on the copyrights to all these things. Oh, everyone's getting sued. Jason <laughs> said, oh, "This is gonna be great." Uh, I was I was always wanted to do a big out outdoor adventure. Hey, Jason, have you have you done a lot of camping there, Bucko? Champ. <laughs> uh, not since I was a kid. You brought, you brought the tent, right? I am a lawyer, and I'm always prepared. I will buy you a tent. <laughs> I uh, I go up to one of the tents and I, I like kind of like knock on it. I knock on the tent. You see this very grizzly looking man. He like unzips and he kind of looks out at you. He is like looks pretty strung out. Just the fuck do you want? Told you it was a homeless camp. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> I uh, open up my briefcase and I, I first hand him my card. And I was like, uh, excuse me, what is your name, sir? He hops up a big loop and sits up right by your foot and says, I can't eat this. I can't eat this. I'm sorry, this is an eviction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my friend Alex there will see you out. <laughs> Alex? <laughs> Alex just looks at him menacingly and he's just like slowly walking over. <laughs> I'll take a spin doctor roll from the lawyer. That is going to be a three and a two. Yeah, he's pretty strong. Alex says, oh, I'm, I'm being evicted again? Yeah, I'm sorry, you know, the last three months' rent was due uh, three months ago. He says, oh, well, can I <laughs> grab a few things first? Jason, is, is it okay if he grabs a few things? Jason looks in and says, yeah, but I want that. And he points to a clock. Um, the clock stays. Uh, the, the guy says, mm, fine. And I, like, just, like, kind of go over to uh, Smith, and I hand him a box of uh, steak. I like, give him that as a going away present. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you're entitled to this. It's um, in the subsection B after E, but only at before I. It's, it's right there. And then before C. <laughs> yeah, he says, uh, uh, yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. I, I've been through this before. And he grabbed a coffee mug, a feather duster, and, a, and an old pair of boots. And then he just, he just walks away. Uh, Jason, you're a tent to wait. Jason just says, uh, oh boy. And uh, he, he like he does like he runs and does like a swan dive into the tent, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how he broke his neck. Is this the same thing where like we gotta try and make sure he's not born and that we gotta make sure he doesn't get arrested? We didn't pick tracks again, so that's that's fun. So you guys pick one. I'm gonna pick arrested again because it's that's how it's fun. All right, uh, do you guys want to go with the D4 roll again? Can we pick him? Is he not dead? <laughs> dead, sad, or bored? Yeah, de de dead's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with going with dead. Yeah, we'll just make sure he doesn't die. Dead or arrested. I think we could do that, and that sounds easy enough. So yeah, he does a swan dive in there, and then he, he just comes out and says, it's a little musty. That's part of the camping experience, champ. 
Uh, listen here, uh, Bucko, that uh, it reeks with character. He comes out and he says, uh, ah, we should get some firewood. Have, have us up to a little campfire. Are fires allowed in Central Park? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to turn around and it's just going to be like a garbage can with fire going. Yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. <laughs> maybe not in Central Park. Maybe maybe in an alleyway along Central Park. <laughs> You're here in the woods. You can't have a fire here. Do it in the alleyway like a normal person. <laughs> you know anything for you, Statham, buddy? I'm uh, gonna start picking up like kindling. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna reach into my briefcase and pull out like a wad of shredded documents, like that. Uh, that can act as kindling. <laughs> Perfect. After describe rocks, it, it just starts smashing them together. They're not even flint. He's just smashing rocks together, and they're creating sparks. Yeah, hey, on, just be careful with that wad. That's uh, any of those get away. That's the uh, that's the Epstein list. Just be careful with that. <laughs> oh no! I, I was going to say this looked incriminating. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, Roberts. Uh, half of what I have in this briefcase is incriminating at some point. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's a Rob's field, but uh, I didn't need to know that. And I, I'm going to just start putting the fire together using the rocks. So, like, by our powers combined, fire. Yeah, Jason is, uh, he, he takes an axe out uh, from his backpack and he's going over to the nearest tree in Central Park. How'd you get that through TSA? <laughs> Listen, I'm Jason motherfucking Statham, okay? Am <laughs> straight. And I just, like, kind of go for a dap. Follows through with his axe swing and he's trying to chop down the tree. <laughs> hey, Jason, Jason, buddy, pal, hey, friend, what uh, what, what you doing there, uh, bucko? Amigo? I think the word was boss. <laughs> right you are, champ. Can we have, like, a little powwow here? Just, you, come, here, come here, off to the side. Just you and me, you you, you and your buddy Smith here. Come, come on, come, come talk to me. He says, yeah, but first I gotta chop this tree because we need a lot of wood because we're gonna have a hell of a fire. Whoa, 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 hey, hey, trees come second, buddy. People come first. <laughs> Did you get that from, like, a doormat or something? <laughs> <laughs> Fresh trees don't burn well, guys. Yeah, that that's the other thing. Just, just put it out there. Yeah, Jason, you should listen. Alex knows his shit. I, I know a lot about burning things. Wood especially. Grew up in a cabin. In the middle of this conversation, you, you see a, a man in a pigeon costume walking down, and, and you just hear, Only you can prevent forest fires! And he's, like, flapping his wings around, doing, like, a mascot dance. And he's uh, walking through this national park. Oh, Jason, we got we got to go get our picture with uh, Polly, the uh, no fire pigeon. <laughs> the flame retardant pigeon. Flame retardant pigeon. <laughs> you can bring your axe. He takes the axe and he just throws it like a boomerang as far as he can, and he starts walking over to Polly the pigeon. He's super excited. Polly, Polly, we need we need a photo. I fucking love Polly the pigeon. <laughs> All right, uh, Polly and Jason together say fire retardant. Polly comes out. Retarding. Jason, fire. <laughs> uh, th thank you, Polly. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. And then uh, you see a red dot on Polly's chest. <laughs> hey, uh, Polly, I know you're a pigeon, but a uh, duck. <laughs> uh, give me a roll for that. What roll? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just roll these six. Fuck it. <laughs> Can I roll a Statham lore? I know he would be very sad if Polly were to die. <laughs> We don't care who's that. Just arrested or dead. Okay, yeah, give me Statham lore to convince Polly how much he means to Jason Statham. All right, that's good. That was a uh, two on the D12 and a six on the D6. Okay. You say, uh, I know you're a pigeon, but uh, duck. And then he goes, Mark. <laughs> he squats down, and you hear another rifle shot. D does he manage to dodge? Yeah, but it, he hits a duck in the pond behind him. Oh no, I, I, I didn't realize I was telling the future. The duck just pops into a bunch of duck feathers. <laughs> Luckily, Jason doesn't see it. But Jason, did you hear that? I don't know. I, I was listening to Shania Twain again, and he takes off his phone. <laughs> well, I just heard the starting gunshot to the uh, duck fishing. You you better go get your fishing pole there, uh, buckaroo. Did you say duck fishing? Duck fishing? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's that carnival game which is shoot kind of ducks with numbers on them. <laughs> yeah, look, one's floating in the pond right now. <laughs> do do we find a fishing pole in the tent that we uh, we we took over? Jason pulls one out of his pocket. Uh, he has uh, one of those little kid fishing poles, and he just snaps the pieces together. It's like pink. It's like fr uh, frozen themed. It's got Elsa on it. I see you brought your lucky uh, fishing rod. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to catch a whale today. <laughs> catch a whale. Uh, maybe two for a mallard. <laughs> yeah, he goes over. He says, uh, "I'm feeling lucky. I'm feeling lucky." Yeah, he casts out his fishing pole. 
I'm gonna like pull Alex to the side, like, uh, yeah, no, that was an actual fire shot. We should probably keep a high alert on. You see Polly, he's swimming around in the pond with all the ducks. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and he just keeps saying, only well, you can prevent forest fires. I'm beginning to think he's extremely retardant. He's special. He's special, guys. Don't don't worry about it. He's he, he's a duck whisperer. <laughs> Jason is standing there at the edge of this uh, duck pond, and there's all these little ducks. One uh, duck is not moving as much as the other, and then there's Polly uh, in the middle. And uh, Jason's like, "What a great day this is! Uh, my favorite mascot, my favorite employees of friends, and ducks. I love ducks." <laughs> As he's saying that, you see another red dot on Polly <laughs> in the middle of the pond. And he's like, if anything were to ever happen to Polly, I don't know what I would do. That would, that would be the end of end of everything for me, I think. And uh, yeah, you see this red dot on Polly as they're floating around in the pond, flapping their wings. Forest fires! <laughs> Polly, you, Polly, your favorite bar. What? Dive. <laughs> uh, give give me a roll. <laughs> um, is this gonna be Statham lore again? Because I'm trying to save the innocence of Jason Statham. <laughs> hey, um, no, you did um, you did some comedic improv in your acting career, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe failed actor. You were a comedian. You know, I did that improv troupe for like two days. <laughs> oh no, that is a, that is an eight and a four. Oh, okay. Uh, does someone else want to try and save Polly? Because uh, I don't think you understood what I meant. Well, Polly gets shot in the head. Ah. <laughs> I gotta say, witnessing a man in a pigeon costume having his head blown up, that's uh, thats throwing some, adding some adrenaline to me. <laughs> Very traumatizing. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna give you some adrenaline. Yeah, uh, not great. It was, it was a hunting accident. <laughs> he thought he was a deer. Jason is saying, you know, if anything would happen to Polly, that would be unbearable. This explodes. <laughs> Polly's head gets blown open. There's brains everywhere, all over the other ducks, and and Polly's twitching in the middle of this lake. How? Oh, why was he in the lake? <laughs> Jason dives into the pond to go get Polly's body. Oh no, he <laughs> understood what I meant. He says, "Holy shit, Polly!" And he dives in, does a perfect leap over all the other ducks. He's in the center of the lake, holding the man inside of the pigeon costume with his brain blown open. <laughs> and he's just like, "Did we? Did we do it? Did we prevent forest fires?" <laughs> yeah. He says, "It's gonna be okay." And then the man in this costume is just like seizing. He's got no eyeballs. They're like floating in the lake. Yeah, this shot was. You're like quick and you know painless. We just. I see like some people walking by. Like just filming a movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, actually, you see some police sirens in the distance. Oh shit! He can't get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, hey, how about we uh, back away from the corpse? That's very incriminating, buddy. <laughs> He's got pins all over his jacket that say, We love Polly, Polly the Pigeon, only we can prevent forest fires. <laughs> I've never noticed those. That's Polly the Pigeon, and he's my friend. I'm a Feinstein Junior Polly. Feinstein Junior Polly. these sirens in the distance. So you're trying to convince him to get away from the, from the body. Alex is going to, like, guide him out. All right, we've had enough time in the park. It's time to get you uh, dried off. Give me a roll. You can try and make it one of your abilities, which is these hands are weapons. These weapons are also weapons. Or extra Oh, you can do extraction. Hey, extraction <laughs> would probably be the best one. So, uh, D12? Yeah. I got a seven. Extraction is six, so that's a failure. Damn. So, yeah, you're trying to, like, coerce him out, and he's just, like, not having it. He's just very distraught about Polly's head being blown open. You see four or five cruisers pull up on the side of Central Park and all the cops rush out and they're standing behind trees and they've got their guns drawn and they're saying, get away from the pigeon. Uh, and they're pointing their weapons at Jason Statham. Damn, it's too bad he doesn't have a good lawyer. <laughs> I can explain if you would just take my phone. You're trying to yell? Yeah, I'm trying to yell this, and I'm trying to go to the chief of police. There's just like a handful of officers, and they're sort of surrounding him in like a semicircle. And they're all like behind trees and behind their vehicles at a distance, pointing their guns at Jason, telling him to step away. Oh god, he's gonna be arrested and killed. The two things you were trying to avoid. <laughs> you have to try and... you don't want to make any sudden movements, right? 
I'm going to try and tell Jason that um, Polly always wanted a burial at sea. <laughs> so we're going to light this piece on fire. <laughs> I'm going to try and go with some of my uh, statham lawyers. Like, you know, that's true, Jason. You were the head of the Polly fan club. You know, that was one of the facts that you had on your website. <laughs> Give me a statham lore role, Robert. I uh, just get to do a fast talk as well. The spin doctor? Yeah. Well, it's tough because you guys are trying to accomplish the same thing. But yeah, all right. Spin doctor and a statham lore. We'll see how we work out. I rolled a two or four. Okay. Yeah, no, mine was a 10 and a 5. Okay, yeah. So he says, um, he did want a burial at sea, but I was never part of the fan club. <laughs> he takes the body and he just pushes it down to the bottom of the lake. <laughs> oh, that's... Instantly, you hear a couple of shots fired into the lake towards Jason. <laughs> Can I find like, like a police chief or whoever looks like they're in charge? I am going to roll on the dead track. Jason is getting shot at. So it's a D3, and we'll see how many points he goes up. How many points do we have until he's shot? Oh, 10. We've been pretty conservative. So two, he's going to tick up two points on the dead uh, track as he's getting shot at. All right, max of 10. Got it. He said he wants a burial at sea, and Jason, like, pushes this dead corpse, like, down to the bottom of the lake. All the ducks fly away. Yeah, he's in quite the situation here. Uh, can, can I try and find, like, the uh, chief of police? There's one guy um, at the other end of the park, and he's got the me megaphone, and he's just saying, Jason Statham, put your hands in the air and get out of the pond. <laughs> Jason just says, how can I live when Polly's dead? How can I continue my life? Look, buddy, we got a contract for three more movies. You got to at least make it past that. Jason, Jason, Polly would have wanted you to continue his legacy and go about preventing forced <laughs> He looks down at his pin. It says, only you can prevent forest fire. Yeah. <laughs> I say, what did he always used to say, Jason? What did he always used to say? That only I can prevent forest fires. Uh, and I chime in, he's like, and you can't do that if you're dead. He says, you're right. And uh, so um, he looks down at this pool of blood beneath his feet because he's currently standing on the body. How deep is this pond? Is this like a very shallow <laughs> pond? <laughs> right? <laughs> Pretty shallow pond. <laughs> he just like stands up and like he's like up to his knees in water. <laughs> I, like, have you ever been to Central Park? <laughs> that, that, that place is shallow as fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He stands up and the water's just barely at his knees. And there's like bubbles coming off from the corpse beneath him. He's got his hands in the air and he starts walking towards the end, all slow and pouty looking down. He's like, I can't believe Polly's dead. Okay, champ. We'll get through this, all right? Would I be able to get into the water and see if I can get the body out? Uh, well, at this point, as he's exiting and he's got his hands in the air, a handful of officers rush him and try and tackle him to the ground. Can, can I intercept? <laughs> You're gonna try and fight the police? Yeah. I'm gonna try and get between them too. Is like, hey, 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 he's coming peacefully and quietly. He's actually done nothing violent as of yet. As of yet. <laughs> this is not necessary. Please let us just go through and we will discuss things as civil. I, I, I hand them all my card. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets the card. I'll try to get to the police chief if I can. Justin, <laughs> give me spin doctor again. Uh, that's a twelve and a six. Okay. All right, so that's adrenaline. Yeah, and he's gonna take up on the arrested thing as well. Three. He's going three. Well, if you're his lawyer, we can sort it all out down at the station. Right now, this is an active crime scene, and uh, we're taking him into custody. That's fair, and I just want to be on the record that Duck did not deserve it. He says, uh, get down on the ground. And Jason's covered in blood, hands are bloody, he's all wet. My client has done absolutely nothing for you to assume that he is violent, <laughs> besides <laughs> so many action movies. <laughs> uh, and they're gonna put cuffs on him. Have I made it to the chief of police? So while this is happening, you've skirted your way around the other side of the pond. <laughs> you've made it to the chief of police. He's still got the megaphone, he's saying, yeah, do what they say. Yeah, get him, boys. Yep, keep doing that. Read him his Miranda rights. Hey, hey, chief, chief. He points the microphone right in your face and says, what can I do for you? Oh, oh, hey. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, I don't know if I can use my Statham lore, but like, hey, Jason Statham has always been a, a proud supporter of uh, the police. You sure you don't want to try narcotics? <laughs> Well, I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah. like, he's always been a huge support of the police. This is just a huge misunderstanding. And I open up my coat to reveal like a packet of Jason Stakem Stakems. <laughs> Anything we do to you know maybe make this go away? Yeah, roll me Statham lore, and then the D6 as well. And you have adrenaline. 
Oh, I rolled a one on my D12. Okay. Is that still a critical success, even though I have adrenaline? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll still be a critical success, but roll me the D6. D6 is a six. Okay. He says into the megaphone, but he whispered, is that Jason Stakeups? Oh, shh, shh, shh. You know they're, you know, you know that they're out of stock now. He starts like nervously sweating and itching his neck. He says, uh, he put the megaphone down and he said, I've been looking for those for years. I know. Yeah, uh, they, uh, they got recalled for some reason. He says, uh, shh, listen, uh, wh- wh- what can we do to make this all go away? <laughs> Just tell him not to arrest Jason. <laughs> Offer him a lifetime supply. <laughs> he says, uh, this is a tough one. This is a tough one, uh. I mean, there, there might be more if uh, this goes away. Can you do six boxes? I know six boxes seem steep. You know how rare these are. <laughs> uh, this is this is murder. These are about as rare as arresting Jason Statham. <laughs> There's a dead duck and a person. Uh, you seem more concerned about the duck. It's a dead pigeon. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, hey, we we all know what it's like being a mascot. You want to kill yourself every day. He's fine. <laughs> he says, "Listen, I can set it up. However, it doesn't fucking matter." But we can get a new poly. No one will ever know. Of course. Yeah, no. That's the point of a mascot. It doesn't matter who's in the suit. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. All right. Can, can we do five boxes? For you, five and a half. Uh, all right. All right. All right. Done. He lifts up the microphone and says, boys, 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 release uh, Mr. Statham and um, nothing happened here. Nothing happened. <laughs> you just hear bubbling and gurgling coming from the bottom of the duck pond. <laughs> he just does like a whirl with his fingers and says, wrap it up. They undo his cuffs and just shrug their shoulders, and they all like start heading towards their cars. I uh, I hand him six boxes and give him a wink. He sheds uh, like a single tear. He gets a briefcase from his car and he puts them all in the briefcase <laughs> and heads back towards the squad car. All right, well uh, that wasn't so bad. Only one pigeon dead. But with all this going, uh, John's gonna go to the uh, go to the pond, uh, take out a car, and he leaves it floating <laughs> on the water. Uh, Jason comes over and says, "That was that was exciting. That was uh." That was full of action, and uh, I, what, what a good day at the national park this was. Yeah, well, hey, Jason, I know, I know, uh, I know, probably meant a lot to you. Did you, did you want to say a few words before we leave? He said, "Yeah, that's, that's a good idea." And he walks over to the pond and he looks down and he sees this gurgling and blood chunks and John Smith's card floating around. <laughs> He's like uh, looking down and he sees this dead duck like floating by, and he just says, uh, "I promise." I will prevent forest fires. <laughs> Does I? Well, let's head back to the hotel, huh? As we're like heading back, uh, my phone just goes like ding. It's like, oh, hey, hey, Jason, you just got a, I just got a contract in for you for a, a poly movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gets super excited. Says, so his legacy will live on, huh? Uh, yeah, at least uh, the deals for three movies. So poly, poly one, <laughs> poly two, poly the flammer talking kitchen. <laughs> Polly, Polly Revenge, Polly Strikes Back. <laughs> we got an origin story. <laughs> We've got a prequel to the origin story. He's stoked about that. As you guys are walking, he says, oh, my fishing pole. Walks back to go get it, and he's got something on the line. <laughs> he says, oh, yeah, I knew I was going to catch a whale. And he starts reeling, he says, oh, this is a big one. This is a big one. And he starts reeling it in, and it's the mascot hat. <laughs> I mean, you caught it. You should release it. He says, yeah, you're right. And he throws it back in. So you you guys will head back to the hotel, and that'll be his second vacation day. Guys went up a little on on dead, a little on arrested, but otherwise pretty good. Uh, Do those stay up, or do they reset as well? They stay up, yeah. Ooh. But he did good on the first one, so. Dude, we're going to skip to day four. Day three was the rest day. (laughs) We need need time to fix the door. (laughs) Day four, um, we picked two places and combined them together, and two machinations and becomes like one big massive thing uh so you guys are sitting around eating breakfast at the hotel he kicks open the door he's got like swim trunks on (laughs) but also the top half is like a fancy blazer so it's a little confusing and he's got like nice fancy shoes on he kicks (laughs) open the door and says get your shit together boys we're going to the chandelier museum slash banana boating (laughs) <laughs> are we are we gonna banana boat through a chandelier museum the fuck yeah we are <laughs> you know jason if i can say one thing about being your lawyer it's like damn i see the most interesting things <laughs> <laughs> all right i guess i guess i'll go get in my bathing suit and it's like a roll out suit but it's like made out of like bathing suit material okay 
<laughs> uh, John Smith is dressed completely the same, except above the waist, he's like in a full tux and everything, like it would be like as a lawyer, and then just like very flamboyant, like multicolored swim trunks. Perfect. Alex has perfectly nondescript swim trunks. They're blue. You don't even register it. He has a, a Hawaiian shirt on. It doesn't even register. It's like, yeah, whatever. It's a Hawaiian shirt, whatever. He has sunglasses on and uh, a straw hat. That's what draws your attention. The sunglasses, straw hat. <laughs> Jason Statham is actually, bottom half is actually a banana hammock, and the top half is like nice, fancy, like blazer. And yeah, he says, we're going banana boating at the Chandelier Museum. At the same time. Yeah. <laughs> but as long as it's not a Chandelier Museum, we somehow ram a banana boat into it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this. Uh, so what two tracks are we going to pick? I'm going to pick dead. Bored. I think we should go aboard. I don't think okay. we could ever be bored at a Chandelier <laughs> Museum. Right. Banana boating. <laughs> Okay, so we've got dead and bored. Dead has two points in it. Do we do sad because we haven't done sad yet? <laughs> okay, yeah, we, you can't be sad at a Stangelia Museum. It's going to be tough. Sure you can, but uh, we're, we're not trying to do it, so. <laughs> so you guys roll up to this banana boat excursion at the Chandelier Museum. It's a giant warehouse, and inside of the warehouse is a man-made lake. In the lake and around the lake and above on the ceiling is all sorts of chandeliers. Who was this built for? <laughs> Jason Statham. So <laughs> we got one client and one client. Oh, <laughs> uh, welcome back, Mr. Statham, sir. <laughs> it's been very, very dull without you. <laughs> you guys pay for your tickets and you guys get in there. Jason wants to look around a little bit before you guys get on the banana boat. So he's, he's looking at points and he's like, oh, I could use a new chandelier for my... Uh, my uh, apartment, you know? You think they'll sell me? Oh, ooh, I, I, Stephen, I, but I don't know if that's a good idea. It is a museum. I don't know if these are for sale. No, no. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing money can't buy. I'm going to pick out a nice chandelier. You know what? Why don't you help me find one? Yeah, you could probably do that. Oh, you know what? I remember exactly the type of chandelier you like because I, I know all your lore. You've always known my taste. Can I try to pick out a Statham esque chandelier that he's just going to love? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do that. All right, uh, so that is a six on the D12. Okay. Four on the D6. Okay. Oh, 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 wait, no, Statham, that's the one right there. It's a chandelier, but it's a very tiny chandelier, and it's only got one crystal. Nice. <laughs> it's simple, it's uh, elegant, it's Statham. Wow, you have a way with words there. It's just... you, you can hang it anywhere in your apartment. You don't have to worry about, you know, finding one place where it's just gonna sit there forever. You can just put it wherever you want. That's true, that's true. Yeah, I've always been a bit of a minimalist, you know, it's primitive. It's... I think simple's better. How much, uh, let's go find out how much it is, huh? Oh yeah, um, uh, and I like kind of snap my fingers for like any of the wait staff that I assume work here. <laughs> Someone comes over and they've got a bunch of headphones and like cassette players. <laughs> for the museum. <laughs> Yeah, he comes over and says, well, hi there, did you, did you need one of these audio walkthrough, uh, you know, thingies here? You know, I'll give you one. It's all set up and ready to go. And he, like, he, he puts the earmuffs on Jason and he, like, Andrew's like, you can press, uh, press one, start at the first one, and that's over there. And then press two to go to the second. What number is this one here? And I point to the one I picked out. Oh, that's, uh, that's number 42. That's, uh... I click number 42. Please tell me the history of the chandelier, Corey. <laughs> 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 All the details, please. <laughs> I need to know 300 years of his history right now. <laughs> yeah, you press number 42 and it says, This is the dollhouse of Anne Frank. <laughs> <laughs> well, the point you should say that this is the Auschwitz chandelier. It was Adolf Hitler's prized possession, it was in his apartment. <laughs> That crystal is made uh, from everybody that went into the gas chamber. So <laughs> it's a Jewish crystal. Press down into a fine Swarovski. I, I pause. I pause. Say, I'm sorry, Jason. This is a war crime. We can't buy this. Jason says uh, he didn't actually listen to it. But it's it's beautiful. It's, it's elegant. Uh, no, I've got to have it. I want it. I want it now. I want it into my apartment. And I will be very sad if I don't get it. Oh, why just really sad? <laughs> this is where like a bunch of small orange men come up and start singing us. 
Mr. Statham has a fine eye. He has a tooth for unappreciated artists. In this case, he has an appreciation for an Austrian artist that most people don't really like. He says, Alex Miller, uh, grab the chandelier, bag it up, put it in my car, and we'll work out the details later. What? Okay, that's a good way to get it. Well, yeah, you can be. You can get arrested this time. Never mind. Yeah, mind <laughs> your. <laughs> um, I just hand the attendant uh, five boxes of steakums. That should uh, that should cover it. If we're actually doing you a favor by getting one of this. He takes the box of steakums and says, no, sir, these expired three years ago. No, no, I, 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 they, they've been frozen. It's fine. I'm, I'm actually not really interested in And everything in this museum is is quite delicate. It's a, it's a real important part of history. And, and that's what this is all about, you know, just, 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 just. Oh, so you're, you're, you're a fan of Hitler. Alex, meanwhile, is just goose-stepping right out with the chandelier. You're, you're okay with you're okay with everything that Hitler did, huh? No, I, I like to illuminate people uh, through chandelier knowledge. John's going to step in. Um, there's like John Smith of Smith and John's Attorneys of Law, and I'm going to hand the tenant in my card. He takes the card and says, oh, that's cool. That's cool. He's a nice lawyer, huh? And I'm like, he, he's a Nazi lover. I'm, I'm to assume you have um, all the pa proper paperwork for this, uh, this piece of history, yes? And I mean, um, uh, do you actually have a right to own it? Oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm just employed by, by uh, you know. The government? <laughs> Big chandelier. <laughs> um, do you understand what happened to, like, the Egyptian mummies and things like, you know, ransacked by the British people and, like, stolen and... You, you know the the crimes that were committed there, yes? The British got away with it. I haven't taken archaeology yet, but, you know, this is just kind of like my, my summer job. I'm here to illuminate, you know, about chandeliers and chandelier history and, you know. Dark history of how you swindled the fatherland. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, we're not, we're not in Germany, right? But this is a German artifact. Should it not be in their hands, namely in his department in Germany? <laughs> yeah, Statham's a German name, right? <laughs> this guy's, like, connecting the dots. He's like making motions with his fingers like yeah yeah that makes sense yeah well i mean i mean yeah germany yeah, this is german i mean as you guys are having this conversation someone comes and whispers in his ear and then um he says he just says well i guess i don't really give a fuck anymore because I, I just got fired so uh <laughs> here take all these uh and he hands you all of the cassettes and everything and says uh i guess the stock market just crashed i don't i don't really know uh but uh, i don't have a job anymore so if, if you need a guy that you know, does audio walkthroughs on, you know, here's my number. And he hands you a card, um, John Smith. Uh, I read it. It's a Smith Johnson <laughs> audio walkthrough extraordinaire. I put it in my pocket. And then he just kind of shrugged his shoulders and he unloaded. Oh, who walked up and whispered to him? Uh, it looked like it would have been like somebody like dressed well, like it would have been like his his boss probably. Are you, ha you happy, Jason? You got your Hitler <laughs> chandelier. <laughs> it's a really nice chandelier, man. He's looking at his phone, <laughs> and he's got a discerning look on his face. Jason looks pretty upset and says, eh, little fuck is right. The stock market crashed. Our dollars are worthless. Well, did you buy any green bucks? I hope the Jason Steakums stop <laughs> <laughs> No, no, the, the, the Steakums creatures are high. Yeah. They, they're, they're valuable enough to get away with murder, so. <laughs> I invested three quarters of my fortune into uh, chandeliers of America and other places. <laughs> right now is a great time to buy. Everything is low, you buy. It's all up from here on out. Yeah, just buy more. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, a, I guess while we wait to, to hear more about the stocks, let's, uh, let's get on this banana boat, huh? Oh yeah, the other reason we came here. Yeah. There's a guy there and he's dressed as a banana. As you would be. Literally a banana boat. That's uh, what I expect. Banana boat. Jason walks up and he just says, uh, yeah, man in a banana. Banana boat. I'm on a banana boat, mother. <laughs> he goes and plops on the banana boat, which is also in the shape of a banana, but it's got like lights on it. It's a nice boat. I like it. He smacks the seat on the side and says, let's go boys. I suppose. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm in. Uh, everyone's on the banana boat and the chandelier is under the water and you can see it through the glass. Glass bottom boat? <laughs> and you can see all the chandeliers <laughs> at the bottom of the water, you know. Seriously, like, who the fuck invested in this? <laughs> <laughs> I look at the guy in the banana suit and I, and I ask him, was like, um, hey, um, just, just out of curiosity, do, um, do chandeliers float? <laughs> Not at all. Trust me, I've done it. <laughs> Does I well? Uh, I don't think so, but um, you know, as long as there's no electricity running to him, huh? And he like nudges, huh? huh? I nudge him back, huh? 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 <laughs> uh, he looks confused. I nudge him more, huh? 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 Alex is unamused at all of this. <laughs> I like point to the guy's like, hey, you got something on your shirt. He looks. Is there a red dot there? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I thought, I thought, 
I thought my timer was going to be better on that. Well, we'll do it later. He continues to look confused. But he gives this long spiel as you guys are, like, floating along this big indoor man-made lake about the history of all different chandeliers and culture. And chandeliers go back, all the way back to the Mayans. And ancient Egyptians had chandeliers. And what the future of chandeliers might be. And chandeliers and submarines. And you pass by a big submarine. <laughs> as you guys are floating along. Jason is like looking over, leaning over the side of the boat, and he, he's looking pretty down. <laughs> he's just down about submarines? Yeah, buddy, uh, what's, the, what's the matter, huh? You seem down. You usually love coming to the <laughs> Chandelier <laughs> Museum and banana boating. He says, uh, well, I mean, you guys are my closest employees. And, yeah, so you would know that my Gammy Statham died in a submarine. And uh, it's bringing back traumatic memories. Uh, I'm feeling pretty blue about this, honestly. It's, it's not quite the excursion I was hoping for. Can I roll some Statham lore that I want to just drop on him? Yeah, sure. Oh, no, that's a that's a 10 and a 1. Yeah, I've got nothing, uh, Jason. Everything's sad and depressing. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It was very traumatic. And I'm going to roll um, I'm going to roll for the uh, on the sad, sad. sad table. <laughs> uh, one. So we've got one on the sad table. I'm going to like kind of like fumble and like not really like, uh, oh, Jason, what about this? And I just push the guy into the water. You push the banana guy into the water? Yeah, it's going to be funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you, you just like push the banana boat guy over and he's struggling to swim in the banana costume. It's sort of like difficult to stay afloat and he's like drowning. I'm like, oh, Jason, you were a lifeguard at some point in time or trained to be one for a movie or something. You should, you could go save him. Yeah, but I can't bear to look over at the big ass submarine. <laughs> it's it's on the opposite side of the submarine. Come on, bud. Guys, like splashing your eyes. Help, help me, help me. Hey, what did your Grammy always say just before she died in that submarine? I should never went on this damn submarine. That's what she said to me. No, no, it was after that. I was there for some reason. <laughs> I'm going to try and do some more Statham lore. Okay. She said, you're the greatest damn swimmer I've ever seen. Always save people who are drowning. <laughs> Give me some Statham lore. <laughs> oh, that's better. That's a five and a six. Oh, uh, yeah. He says, ah, you're right. She did say that. You were there for some reason. <laughs> he takes off his blazer and he's stuffed in the banana hammock. Springboards off into the lake to go get him. Catches a glimpse of the submarine and like looks the other way quickly. And then he lands in the water and he's he's rescuing this guy. And uh, I just whispered in my in my breath. Yeah, make your game game proud. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you hear sirens. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, he, I pushed the guy in, so. There's a bunch of employees right offshore, and they're, like, waving. They're like, hey, hey, the dam broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know the stocks are bad. Yeah, we get it. And you just see a big rush of water, greater than the building, smashing in. How could a building contain more flood with more water <laughs> than it could actually contain? Uh, it, it was the dam up from the town, from outside the building. And it's crashing. They, they dammed an entire river for this structure? <laughs> well, they dammed, they dammed the town. It's damn town. The damn town. <laughs> There's water flooding in from everywhere. And the lake is becoming unsteady and wavy. And Jason is like, I I'm not sure I'm that great of a swimmer. Jason, 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 this is very important. We need to finalize your will. <laughs> well, it was all in stocks anyway, so. Okay, it's done. I invested 83% of all of my fortune into Chandeliers of America. <laughs> Which is now flooding, right? <laughs> Don't worry, the 17 others percent was smart crypto. <laughs> now, Alex, Alex, don't you notice, would you go help him out or something? Uh, that's my job, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think this is a good time for some extraction. You're going to try and extract him? How far out is he in the river, I want to say? The boat and him have like separated a little bit, so there's a good distance. You might be able to throw, like, a life preserver or something, like, you know. Ah, yeah, the hell with that. No, 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 I'm going to wrap the rope that's connected to the life preserver. I'm going to wrap that around my arm. While the life preserver is with me, I'm going to jump out, full frog leap out off of the border of the uh, boat towards Jason, and I'm going to try to get him back. Okay, give me an extraction. Uh, D12? Yep, and a D6. Five and a one. So you're able to grab the life preserver and make it out to him. And you're able to grab him. It's you, him, and the life preserver. And a banana guy has gotten washed away. He's slammed into a bunch of chandeliers. 
Oh, that's going to be a bloody fretted mess. Yeah, um, Jason sees it and he says, oh, that makes me sad. <laughs> oh, well, uh, yeah, but Jason, that could have been you, so that should make you happy. Oh, that does make you a little happy. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're looking at glass half empty. You got to look at it half full. This is some like chandelier half empty. <laughs> you know what, Jason? Honestly, I'm a little sad, too. I didn't, uh, I didn't hand the banana man my card. He says, oh, yeah, yeah with that again. <laughs> Why are you ruining this? <laughs> We're gonna roll on a sad table for Jason. <laughs> uh, three, so he's up to four for sad. Does anyone know how to manage a banana boat through a raging, damn flooded uh, stadium? I think there's one trick that I remember. <clears throat> Dale! <laughs> Dale! Daylight, come on, we won't go home. Is that it? Uh, so give it. You're trying to sing your way out of it. What, what, what are we gonna uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing the banana boat song, and hopefully that turns into a montage of us getting the boat to shore. Okay, give me a failed actor roll. <laughs> come, Mr. Tallyman, tally me bananas. Yeah, come and me one go home. That's a three on the dice and a six. <laughs> All right, yeah. Here, come and me one go home. I got it. Harry Belfonte. Jason Statham gets us to safety. What was it? A uh, six foot, seven foot, eight foot flood. <laughs> <laughs> Statham, save us. We got to go home. Hey, yo. <laughs> yeah, so uh, everybody in the chandelier shop, including the guy that got fired, he just walks over and... um. Is he Jesus walking on water? <laughs> yes. Yeah, he, everybody walks over and starts clapping. They like come and me one go home. Yeah, they like uh, jump into the lake. They're all like dressed in bananas. <laughs> yeah, and it's like this whole epic scene of synchronized swimming. And they like break down. They like warm a banana from an aerial view. <laughs> in this routine, they tie the boat with like some ropes around the banana boat, and they start like swimming. They like come and me one go home. And they're like pulling the banana boat to shore. They take Jason Statham, they lift him up, and they're they're all like carrying him out. The market crashed and we're kind of sad, but that's okay. We're gonna go home. And they like, <laughs> and they like throw Jason Statham out out out, to, out into the parking lot, and they slam the door. And uh, yeah, you and Jason Statham are in the parking lot. Holy shit, that was fun. That was a good time. You know, it's weird this happens every time we come here. <laughs> and you guys get into the car, and the last thing we see is Robert Robertson checking his phone. And you get a notification. The stock price for Jason Stakeums has gone through the roof. <laughs> hey, Jason, I'm, uh, I got some work lined up for you, but I'm taking a vacation after this. <laughs> he says, uh, I will walk him with you, and I'll make sure you have a great time. Uh, you know, it's going to be a staycation at my house. <laughs> I can now afford that my steakums are worth something. And we, just, we just see the cop at his house in a white stained t-shirt in like a, a lazy boy recliner chair covered in steakums. <laughs> but I need a vacation from this vacation, yes. But yeah, that's uh, Jason Statham's big vacation.